The cab driver glanced at his rear-view mirror, and his eyes followed the tall woman as she exited the airport door and entered his taxi. I'm not quite sure where I want to go, actually. I've missed my connecting flight home, and I have two hours to kill before the next one. Do you know a restaurant nearby that serves something a bit better than airline food? Hey, aren't you that famous mystery writer, Jessica? Fletcher. Yeah, I've seen your face in the paper. I don't waste my time reading mysteries. Jessica detected a smirk in the man's voice as he continued. I work real hard, 10, maybe 14 hours a day. You know, so when I read, it's a newspaper. I see. Newspapers have too much violence for me. I prefer to curl up with a good book when I get home. Yeah, I do most of my reading during red lights. Really? I thought cab drivers did most of their driving during red lights. Hey, you're all right. I'll take you to the best place in town, Hoffinger. Hoffinger's is a great French chef who came here about five years ago. He married uh, Mary Bird. She was one of those fancy society women, and, and they opened a big restaurant. She's a gourmet who fell in love with Hoffinger's cooking, and then fell in love with Hoffinger himself. The reason I know all of this is because it's in the newspaper plenty this year. There's a, there's a restaurant critic named Franklin White, and he's got some sort of thing for Hoffinger. He keeps giving him lousy reviews. Don't they spot him when he comes in? That's just it. He wears a different disguise each time he goes into the restaurant. Yeah, there's also a silent partner in the restaurant. Well, at least he was silent until all the hoopla began. His name is Arnie Fallon, and he's an old-time gangster. You know? Anyway, uh, Fallon doesn't know anything about food, but he knows he's losing his money in the investment. And the word is that he's ticked off at Hoffinger for not keeping up the reputation of the restaurant. And the word is that Hoffinger's wife is fooling around and, and wants out of the marriage. And the word is that the restaurant you can learn an awful lot during red lights. Jessica sensed something was wrong as soon as she entered the restaurant. It appeared at first that she was the only one there. Then she noticed several police officers wandering around just inside the door to the kitchen. Walking toward the door, she heard a woman's tearful voice. He called me to say he was preparing a dinner just for the two of us. A romantic candlelight dinner like the one we had the night he proposed to me. Jessica peeked into the kitchen and took in the scene. A dozen police officers gathered around a woman sobbing into her handkerchief. This must be Mary Bird, Huffinger's estranged wife. And judging by the body line chalked on the floor, she is his widow. A short, heavy-set man stood next to the widow. His toupee did not quite match the hair on his head. Restaurant critic Franklin White, no doubt. Jessica remained silent and watched the officers continue the interrogation. Judging by the way the fish had been cooked, the police lab determined that Mr. Hoffinger was working until at least half-past two. When exactly did you arrive here tonight, Mrs. Hoffinger? I came over at three. We were going to dine before the restaurant opened. It was quite a shock when I found Hoffy dead next to his table. So I called 911, and then he came in and acted very suspicious. She pointed to Franklin White. What are you implying? My editor is my witness. I was with him from, from nine this morning uh, until uh, about an hour ago. I, I left uh, to come to dinner. I did it early. I didn't want to run into the maitre d'. Uh, he knows me, you know, and I was afraid he'd throw me out. Uh, sure, there, there's bad feelings between me and this place, but I'm a critic, not a murderer. If Mrs. Hoffinger wants to get to the truth, ask her about this. 
As White reached for the jar labeled Mary's Dreamy Creamy, a policeman shouted, Hold it. Our preliminary investigation suggests that Mr. Hoffinger was poisoned. <gasps> My goodness, was the poison in this? This is the low-calorie food substitute I'm marketing through my new food company. I had it here delivered last night so that Hoffy could try it out. Looks like he tried all right. Uh, here's the recipe. Uh, mix one half cup cream with one egg, add salt to taste. Didn't I see a teaspoon in Hoffinger's hand before you took him away? At that moment, Jessica was startled by a beefy hand that pulled her shoulder back roughly. She jumped back as a burly man barged past her into the kitchen. Out of my way, sister. Wow, if it ain't my old buddies in blue. What are you guys doing in my joint? And where's that bum Hoffinger? Ain't I lost enough dough? That must be Arnie Fallon. The man's reptilian eyes searched the room. The gangster appraised the situation faster than any detective. Wait a minute. I see what you guys are doing. Somebody bumped off Hoffinger, and you guys waited around so you could pin it on me. Well, this frame ain't going to work. I want to call my lawyer right now. I can prove I was in meetings all day. I can... Jessica entered the kitchen. May I interrupt? Now, I don't mean to intrude, but I think I can prove Mr. Hoffinger committed suicide. If I could just get a look inside the bottom of this food processor. There was a puzzled but obedient silence as Jessica turned the device on its side. Does anyone have something I can use to unscrew this panel? Mary Bird rummaged through her purse for a second and produced a small nail file. Will this do? Maybe, but perhaps one of the gentlemen has something better. Jessica raised an eyebrow in the direction of Franklin White. Not me. All I carry are my credit cards and keys and, uh, let me see, will a dime work? Not quite good enough. She turned to Fallon. You look like a resourceful man. Can you help? Fallon fumbled in his pocket and handed over a pocket knife. This'll do it. Jessica fiddled with the knife until she found the screwdriver blade. She then re-examined the food processor for a moment and put it down right side up. All eyes followed her with rapt attention as she spun around dramatically. Forgive me for my little white lie. I never thought for a moment that this was a suicide. Huffinger was killed, and I can name his murderer. Can you name the murderer? Complete the jigsaw puzzle picture and examine it for vital clues.